Hey, what's up everybody? It's Quentin from Capri AI. I just wanted to make this tutorial for you guys today to show you just how awesome the new Go High Level Developer API and portal really is. So today we're gonna to create a simple uh, tracking app, time tracking app to keep track of how long it takes our clients to respond back to the leads that we're generating for them. We're not gonna to have to write really any code. There's gonna be a little bit of copy and paste, but I'll show you how to do the whole thing. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So to get set up now, it's actually uh, super easy. You just come to marketplace.gohighlevel.com uh, and you'll click sign up. Uh, and once you click sign up, it'll have just a sign up process for you to go through. They'll issue you a new login and password and everything. Uh, and that's it. You get your own uh, developer account. And then once inside, it'll look a little like this. And you'll notice here, I do have two different apps already built. Um, or I'm sorry, already listed on here. One of them is our public app that we use for connecting dialogue flow, but the other one is uh, one that I'm gonna use for this tutorial. So to create an app, it's super simple. All you do is create app, put the name of it, uh, and then put if you want it to be private or not. Uh, so since I already created one, I'm not gonna make another one. I'll click on this and you'll see I've gone ahead and added some scopes in here. So the scopes, uh, which you can get a full list of them here uh, in the link that it provides here, it shows what you can and cannot do. So I'm going to take a quick second to explain what this means. So you'll see I have conversations, message.readonly, message.write, contacts.readonly, and contacts.write. So basically what this means is because I have the conversations message read-only scope, I will receive a webhook notification, a post request, every time anything happens with a message inbound or outbound in any conversation in any sub account that this app is connected to. So if I want to be able to receive inbound and outbound notifications for every message that comes in or out of my account, this is the scope that I would need. Message.write, as you probably assume, um, makes it so that I can send an app as if I was a user without actually having to be logged in using the app credentials, which we'll go over here in just a little bit. And then contacts read only and write, pretty much the same thing, just a different resource. The resource is contacts instead of conversations. So that is what the scopes are for. So for everything that you want to be notified about, let's say you want to be notified every time somebody, every time a, an opportunity is created. So every time an opportunity is created, if you want the opportunity to be sent to your this application that we're building right now, you'll click opportunities read only, click add, and that will add that scope to your app. Now, the way that your app actually gets those notifications is through this webhook URL right here. And I'm gonna show you where to get that in just a minute, but this webhook URL will now receive post requests, API requests to every single time a conversation message has an update, if it gets sent or if it gets received, I will get a post request every time. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and create our Integromat scenario. Since we don't want to actually build a real app, we're going to use Integromat uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so now that we have an app that is subscribed to a couple of uh, events, let's go ahead and give it somewhere to send that data. So here, uh, we're going to go ahead and add the webhooks module. So if you just click here down the bottom, type webhooks. Put on that there, we're going to click on custom webhook to uh, when it receives data. Uh, I already have one here, but if you don't have one yet, all you got to do is click add. You can leave this blank, click save, and then it should give you a URL just like this. Uh, and so you're going to copy that address. We're going to go back on over to our app here. We're going to put that address right here, and we're going to save that. And so now, as soon as I add this application to one of the sub accounts that I want to use this for, uh, I will start seeing the events be sent to that URL. So the next step is how can I actually add a sub account uh, to this app? How can I let this app be connected to a sub account? And that is where redirect URLs come in. So that is what this next step is going to be. We're going to show how to use these redirect URLs uh, to actually get a access code and a token. Uh, and then from there, uh, we can use that token to uh, do anything that we want. So let's go ahead and set up our redirect URLs. All right, so the easiest way to show you how to get this uh, OAuth redirect URLs 
stuff taken care of it, without having to write too much code uh, is to actually just use one of their funnels. Um, this takes care of all of the basic boilerplate HTML and stuff, so you don't have to worry about anything with that. So let's go ahead and add, I created a new uh, funnel. Let's go ahead and add a new step. This step is just going to be the home page, and it can just be that. And we're going to create that funnel step. Let's go ahead and edit that. This is going to be very, very simple, full width, one row with one column, one element, and it's just going to be a big button. And in this button, let's put some wording. Let's say uh, click to connect your app. Perfect. So let's preview that. Let's just see how that looks. Great. Super simple. Now what we need to do, because OAuth is a two-step process, we actually do have to add a little bit of custom code in here. If you want to know more about it, I'll make another video about what the code is actually doing. But for now, I'm going to link the GitHub repo in this video so that you can just copy and paste the code. Um, but basically what we're doing is on this button, you can see that here we have open pop up as the action. But what we want to do is we want to redirect uh, to the go high level OAuth uh, marketplace URL. And so I'll show you what that looks like here. All right, so I've gone ahead and pasted uh, the first part of the URL that we need to redirect them to here. So it's marketplace OAuth. Let's see if I can get a view of it. So it's marketplace OAuth, uh, choose location, and then the response type is going to be code. Um, the redirect URI, now this part is important, is important because this redirect URI can only be one of the uh, one of the URLs that you add here. So let's say I wanted to add um, just my main website here. I'm going to go ahead and just add HTS free AI.us. So this is going to be where they go uh, after they click on that after they click on that button. So now back in the funnel builder here, we're going to now that we have that URL updated and it is authorized. Now we're going to put HTS to freeai.us because that was uh, what I where I said it needed to go. Now, after you've put the uh, redirect URL, the next part of the query param here is going to be and client ID equals, and this client ID is going to be your app client ID. And so, where you get that from is if you go here, you'll see you can add client keys here. So, I'm going to go ahead and add a key uh, client ID secret pair. Uh, and then you'll see that they'll be listed right here. And now I've got a client ID and a client secret. Now, when you go to create this one very important thing to remember uh, is that they will only show you the client secret once and that's for security purposes. So whenever you go to add this, make sure you copy your client secret key, keep it somewhere secure because you will need it uh, whenever you want to refresh a token or do anything that involves the OAuth client access. So now that we have our client ID, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put this client ID at the end of our URL here. So we're going to go here. We're going to add client ID just like that. And now the last part of the URL here is going to be the scopes that you're requesting. So we're going to put and scope equals. And now this needs to be a list and it's kind of weird, but there does need to be a space in between each scope that you have permission for. So I'm going to go back to my app. I'm going to look at what scopes I do have access to. So I have conversation message read only. So I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, as a scope that I want. So here at the end, I'm just going to put message read only. And then if I want to add another scope, I'm actually going to put a space there, which I know seems wrong, but just trust me. Um, so I'll put all of that there. Uh, I'll put each scope that I want. All right. So now that I've got my scopes in here, I've got my URL ready. I'm going to click preview. And what this is going to do is this is going to pull up that page that I just uh, was working on and I'll click the button and you can see it used our client ID, used our redirect URI, used everything and it pulled up all of the accounts that I have for the currently signed in user. So these are all of the accounts that I am able, these are all my go high level accounts essentially. And so if I were to choose uh, one of the accounts that I wanted to just test with, let's say I do this one. So now you can see where did I get redirected to right back to where I told it to. And you can see here in the URL, I do have a code parameter. Uh, and that is how I will be getting the token.
So let me show you how to do that. But that's just the first part of the OAuth process. All right, so I said OAuth is a two-step process. We have done the first uh, step so far. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on back to our funnel builder here, and we're actually gonna add another page. And this page, the reason that we're gonna add another page, I'll, I'll show you in just a second. If you remember at the end of that one, uh, or I'm sorry, if you remember at the end of the first one, it put a code in the top of the URL parameter. So what we need to do is we actually need to get that code and exchange it using our client ID, client secret, and all that information. So like I said, this will involve a little bit of code. I've linked the GitHub repo in the description. It'll show you, it'll have all of the code uh, written for you. You won't have to do anything. So in this, I'm just adding two elements. I'm gonna add another one. And then this one is just gonna be a headline and it's just gonna say, uh, success app has been added to location. Perfect. And so now when they land on this page, this script is going to run and the code is going to be in the URL. We're gonna make an exchange for it. And then uh, next thing you know, you will have a token. So let me show you how to do that really quick. So if we look at what the code is that I posted, you'll notice there's a couple things you need to change out in here. So where it says your webhook URL here, you need to put uh, the Integromat URL for now, or you can put any other URL you wanna receive if you're a little bit more advanced. Um, but if this is your first time dealing with any kind of code or anything like that, um, for right now, we'll just go ahead and put the webhook URL. So I'll go back to here, I'll copy that, go back to the builder, and oh, if I can find where I was, I will replace that with that URL just like that. So that's the only thing you should have to change in there. And uh, the last thing that we're going to do so that we can actually get the user to be redirected back to this page, we're going to come right on back here. And we're going to click on this little button here to actually launch this page. Uh, and then we're going to take that URL and we're going to go put it in right in here. So we're going to go ahead. You can either replace the one you put or you can just add that one. Um, and then back here in our home page, we're going to need to edit that button so that it also has that redirect URI as a parameter. So let's go back to our URL here. Let's find where it says what the redirect URI is supposed to be. And oops, let's change that out. All right, so I've got out, I've got my redirect URI changed here to the next page in the funnel that I want it to go. Uh, and so now I'm going to make sure that is saved and we'll go ahead and test it out. So if I go to preview and I go to click to connect your app, and then from here, I'll just choose any of them. And perfect. Now I got added. Now I got redirected back to my app has been added to location page. And you can see that I did get a code in the URI, which is what I needed. So let's go on back to our Integromat scenario. And let's make sure that it was listening. And let's do it again. Perfect. Now that it was actually listening, we'll see that it did successfully determine the data structure in Integromat. So now we're gonna click OK, and we're going to add our next module. And for this next module, we are going to make this a router. So let's go ahead and put a router in here. Sorry, flow control, I guess is the right thing to do. Uh, and we're gonna put router. Uh, and in this router, oops, I added too many extra. In this router, we're going to basically check what is in the request body. So when we get this request here to Integromat, we should have a client token, location ID, and refresh token in that request payload. So let me show you. So if we look at what our router is actually routing to, if we look at the filter that I put on here, um, the condition is that the code exists in the body, right? So it knows that uh, there is a code in the body that got sent. Uh, and so if the code exists, that means we know that we're receiving a new code. And so we need to do something with that code. So in response to getting that code, we are going to make a HTTP request. And so to do that, uh, to find the URL, you can just go back to those uh, high level spotlight session, or I'm sorry, spotlight docs I was showing you. 
go to the OAuth, and then it's going to be the first one that I showed you, the OAuth slash token. So this is the URL that we need to make a post request to, if I can copy it. So we'll go ahead to our Integromat scenario, and we will put that URL, make sure we have the H in there. So now this is going to send to that URL. And so and a couple of important things. Uh, the first thing is on the body type here, this has to be application X www form URL encoded. So you got to choose that. And then for the fields, you can just follow what they have here. So you got to put the client ID. So the client ID is going to be what's listed in your marketplace uh, keys section. And then the client secret is going to be what I told you to copy earlier. Uh, and so we're going to put those in the URL parameter. So we're going to call on, um, let me build this out for you. All right. So the parameters you need, you need client ID, which you got from your marketplace grant type is in this case is going to be authorization code. And then the code is going to be what we got from our original webhook, um, the code that came in the request body. Now you do need one more parameter is the client secret. I don't want to show that in this video, but, uh, you'll, all you'll do is you'll just add client secret here and then you'll just put what your client secret value is. So I'm going to go ahead and add that, pause the video, and then come back uh, so we can go ahead and test this. All right, so now that we have everything set up, let's make sure, by the way, I didn't mention, make sure that this is a post request. It'll default to uh, a get request. We'll make sure this is a post request and make sure that you do select response, uh, I'm sorry, parse response. So that way it will be a nice, pretty JSON object when it's done. So let's make sure this is working. Let's go ahead and click run once. So now this is listening for a webhook request. So let's go on back to the simple page that we built. Let's click on the button and let's choose which account we want. I'm going to do this testing account. And now that app has been added to that location. So success, we did that. Let's go back to Integromat and look, yep, looks like our scenario run was completed. So if we look at the response here in the very last step of uh, our scenario, we'll notice that here in the data, we do have an access token and a refresh token. So congratulations, that exchange process officially adds that location to your app. So now any scopes that you have requested here, you are now going to start receiving webhook requests to the URL that you have registered, which in our scenario is actually this URL. So um, that is really all you need to do to get it so that your location is connected to the account, or I'm sorry, to the app. Now, if you don't plan on doing anything with this token in the future, so if you don't plan on making any API calls that require this or sending any messages or doing anything that requires an access token, you can just leave it here. Uh, and as long as that exchange process happens, then on go high levels back end, your app is registered with that location. So. You don't have to do anything else. It's good. You'll start receiving um, API calls to this URL um, for that location as soon as this exchange process is done. Now, speaking of getting data, our goal with this project is to is to do a time tracker, response tracker. We want to track how long does it take from when a new user sends a message to the time that one of our users of Go High Level responds back to that potential lead. That's what we want to track because we know that our clients are not keeping up uh, as they should. So we want to be able to give them a visual representation of just how long they're taking to get back to the clients. So that's what we're going to do today with Google Sheets. Um, and let's go ahead and get started on that. All right. So now that we have our OAuth process complete, uh, we're going to keep it clean and we're actually going to go back and create a new scenario. Um, and the the easiest way just to go here, click create new scenario. And this one is also going to be triggered off of a webhook and it's going to be a custom webhook. So we'll go here and actually we're going to add a new webhook. So this is going to be message received. received. So we're going to save that and it needs to determine the data structure. So for it to be able to determine the data structure, we're going to copy this address to the clipboard. We're going to go back to our marketplace. Sorry, not there. We're going to go back to our marketplace dashboard, and we're actually going to change out this webhook URL for that one. And there we go. So now our webhook URL is changed out. It doesn't matter that uh, we have the other webhook URL for the OAuth 
uh, exchange because this is where it's going to be sending everything. So now to get it to redetermine the data structure again, I'm going to go back here, I'm going to send myself a quick message, and then I'm going to come back here and we should see that it successfully determined the body structure. So let's go ahead and click OK, add another module, and we're actually going to be adding a router. So flow control, and this is going to be a router. And so the router here, uh, we're going to have four different conditions. All right, so the four different conditions are going to be if this is a new contact, if this is an existing contact, if it's inbound or if it's outbound. So we actually are going to set another filter before this, I'm sorry, another step before this router uh, that's going to be uh, actually to search the Google Sheet for the contact ID that came in. So let me just correct this really quick. Before we do all of that, we're going to add, we're going to add sheets. So we're going to go to Google, oops, one. All right, so we're going to add Google Sheets and we're going to actually search a row. So what we're going to do here is we are going to choose that sheet that I made specifically for tracking inbound and outbound response time. So it's going to be master response time tracker. Uh, and then the sheet is going to be conversation. So to take a look at what that sheet looks like, we have two pages here. We've got the main one here that tracks all of the inbound and outbound messages. And then of course we have the main page, which is actually going to show uh, all of our numbers that we want to show to our client. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to search from A to Z. We actually, sorry, we want to search from A to ZZ, and we want to see if the contact ID is equal to the contact ID that we just received that request for. So we're going to search uh, those sheets, and then from here, we're going to add a router. So let's go ahead and click flow control, click router. Uh, and then we're going to add some conditions here. So the first condition, this is going to be adding a Google Sheet row. So we're going to add a row. And we want to make sure that we only go on this path if it's a new contact and it's in I'm sorry, outbound. So let's say we got a new contact outbound. The condition for this is going to be that contact ID. Uh, does not exist. So if the contact ID does not exist because that contact is not in there, then we are going to we are going to update a row. So or I'm sorry, we're going to create a new row. So we're going to go ahead, choose that master data tracking sheet again, and then we're going to create a new row. So in conversations, we're going to add the contact ID value as the one we received in the webhook. So of course, this is a really long search. So it's going to be the contact ID. The latest inbound is going to be the timestamp. I'm sorry, this is going to be latest outbound because this route is only for new contacts outbound. So we're going to go ahead and put the date added here. And then we're going to click OK. So that is for new contact outbound messages. So if a outbound messages sent from go high level to a contact that we are not tracking the response time for yet. We're going to go ahead and add that sheet here. Then if we do find a contact, so let's say this is also an outbound message. It's going to be an existing contact outbound. So if in this condition, the contact ID is going to exist and the message direction this direction here is going to be equal to outbound. So now we know that it's an existing contact and it's outbound. Let's make sure. So contact ID does not exist and the body, the direction of the message is going outbound. So equal to Now, if the direction is outbound and the contact ID does not exist, we're going to create a new row. Otherwise, we are going to simply update a row. So we're going to update a row. And to update, to choose the row that we're going to update, make sure we go back to the right form. And we're going to choose conversations. And the row number is actually going to be from the row number that we found here. Uh, and the only thing we're going to be changing here is the latest outbound message timestamp, which of course is coming from the request body down here. So we'll click date added. 
and that will be it. So we'll update that row. And then we're just going to have to add uh, two more uh, routes for inbound messaging. But for right now, let's just keep it on outbound. So let's just go ahead and run this once. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to make sure that I'm deleted and I'm going to send myself a message. So I'm going to say, So as long as this webhook is listening, I'll come back here and I will send myself a quick message. So I sent myself a message. Let's go back to the Integromat scenario and let's see what it followed. So we see that we did get a request. It has all of the information we need. We did get, uh, we did search and see that this contact does not yet exist. So Direction is equal to outbound and the contact ID does not exist. So we went ahead and added a row. So let's go check here. We can see here that this is the row. This is a testing row that I put in earlier, but this is the most updated one. So now let's run it again and just make sure that our filter is going to work to make sure that if I send myself a message again, hello there, it should be received yet again. And you'll see that this time, now this filter did not run because contact ID did in fact exist. So in this time it did a Google Sheets update command. So it updated that row uh, and updated to the most recent timestamp. And you'll realize that this timestamp, it says 2100, that's 9 p.m. It's because this is in GMT. So that's five hours ahead of my local standard time. Um, but whenever you're doing math on any of these, you know, addition or subtraction of time, uh, it's independent of time zone. It's, we're just looking for duration. So not a big deal. So we know that that is working now. So now all we need to do is just add two more routes so that it will update on inbound messages as well. Uh, and we will be good to go. All right. So we've got out, we've now got our four scenarios here. If it's a new contact and it's outbound, an existing contact and it's outbound, a new contact inbound or an existing contact inbound. So these are the four scenarios that we're going to be trying to track to see how long it's taking for our clients to actually uh, get back to the leads that we're generating for them. So uh, to make sure that we can actually get the inbound messages, there is a little caveat. If this is not a new Go High Level account, if this is a little bit older Go High Level account, what you'll probably have to do is you'll have to go here to that sub account. So of course, go to your main account and then choose view all sub accounts and then search for the sub account uh, that you're actually testing with. And then over here, uh, if you don't have anything pinned, you'll have to click on explore products. And then under all products, you'll then have to click on phone numbers. So I would go ahead and pin that just in case. Um, but this, this will show all the phone numbers for this sub account. So then if I click on that phone numbers and I click on manage under here under active numbers, and then I click on that number itself, uh, you'll see that I have the option to change uh, where to send stuff when an incoming or outgoing uh, message happens. So right now, this is all for voice and fax. If you come down here to messaging, this is for when a message comes in, you'll see that it's set to message sender twilio slash incoming message. So according to the Go High Level OAuth um, docs, the it actually needs to be changed to this URL right here. So it's services.messagecenter.com slash conversation slash provider slash Twilio slash inbound. And so that's a little bit different um, than what the just default URL is. So you'll need to change that um, so that it's receiving to that URL instead. So now when we click save on there, uh, we should be able to see that my contact still does not have a latest inbound timestamp. But because I've now uh, added that, now that I've actually added that URL for the inbound, if I send myself a message, say, hey, how are you? So if I send myself a message to that URL, um, it'll send back to that Twilio number. That Twilio number will forward the message here just like this. Uh, and then if we go back to our Integromat scenario, uh, we should be able to actually make sure we have this turned on so you can see that this is actually turned off. So I'm actually just going to click run once so that you can actually see. Uh, we're actually going to go ahead and process that existing bundle. Uh, and you can see that because it did receive that request, even though it was down, 
we'll go ahead and look and we can see that the contact ID does exist. So that means it was finding mine and it did go down this inbound route. So it went existing contact inbound. And so if I go back to my sheet, it should have updated my latest inbound. Yep, right here with my most recent message. So now we are now receiving every inbound and outbound message. Uh, we are able to track when the latest inbound and outbound message was for every contact in this sub account. So if I, I am good, how are you? So it's still listening. So if I send that message, we should be able to see in our Integromat scenario uh, that the uh, scenario is completed. So let me go ahead and make sure I run this once, process that existing again. I received everything, and then you can see it's an existing contact outbound. So that is the route we expected it to take, and that is the route that it took. It updated this to the most recent time. And then um, I'm going to send another one. I am great. Thanks. And this time, just to make sure you can see it, make sure that this is running again. So I'm going to run this once, and then I'm going to send that message. So I am great. Thanks. And then we should see that that request comes through here. It might be a little bit of a delay on the high level side, but yep, there we go. There's, and there we go. So it was an existing contact inbound, which is exactly what we expected it to be. So there you go. Now you are able to update your timestamps uh, for your inbound and outbound messages in your Google Sheet. And now uh, over here, we'll see that these will actually update. We'll basically make these values dependent upon the average of all of the differences in the inbound and outbound messages. Um, and we'll also see how many are waiting for user reply versus contact reply. And I'll make this in a different segment of the video. But overall, this is the total process of uh, connecting an app to your Go High Level account. Uh, so I'm going to link this sheet with the formulas for how to populate these cells. Um, it might be different based on, uh, you know, just your use case. So I'm going to link this sheet um, or I link to this sheet in the description of this video so you can get that template to work with. Um, but overall, this has been the process. And I want to just give a huge shout out to the Go High Level developer team. They did an awesome job with the marketplace uh, and with the ability for developers to really extend Go High Level. So if you have any other ideas or questions on uh, what all you can do with the Go High Level Marketplace and how you can actually add your own app, please feel free to comment on this video uh, and I'll make more in the future depending on what the most requested features are. So that's all for now, guys. Uh, thanks for watching.